What's up, friends? Amy Register, the belligerent Bible worker here, and I've had to be in my bonnet over our church's Connect cards and how to use them for some time. But I just came across one that I had made notes on as I was cleaning out my car. My baby is napping right now, so I need to hurry. Um, I was cleaning out my car, and I thought, now is the time. So now's the time. Um, I will not show you this Connect card because it's from a prominent church, but I have visited so many churches in the last year or two, and I keep a lot of the Connect cards. So if you have one of your churches, it's time to do an audit right now. Um, I want to talk about three reasons why I believe our Connect cards are underutilized at best and um, maybe off-putting. Uh, at worst. Um, and by off-putting, I mean like they are, people are looking at them and feeling alienated from your church because that's what happened to me. So here's my story. I work at Sunnyvale SDA church and it's two hours away from where I live. So when I'm not ministering down there, when I'm not working, I'm trying to build community up here where I live. And my husband who was not raised Adventist and is still kind of leery about the the whole like corporate church <clears throat> thing. He definitely is supportive of our beliefs. He loves worshiping with us. He's into Jesus, all that. Don't want you to think not. But as far as church's usefulness, he finds the big corporate churches way less useful. Uh, I, this is why I married him. I, I believe God's calling us to not rely so much on the big church and the big church systems, but to minister to neighbors at kitchen tables. So that's a side note. But anyway, so I would like my husband to change his mind on that a little bit because I am personally fed by going to bigger churches and more, more corporate worship. I, I can get down with that. So I'm not just looking for me. I'm looking for him. You, I'm guessing you have a lot of people in similar situations. Um, our corporate churches kind of attract women. It, it seems to be more made for women. Anyway, long story short is that I'm shopping around, I'm shopping churches. And so I am desperately filling out these connect cards because I want somebody to reach out to me. And I think I'm pretty good pickings. I'm ready and able to volunteer. And, you know, I want to get I want to get social with people. And I read all of these connect cards and they're asking tons of info. That's number one. They're asking questions that I don't think apply to me necessarily. And then I never hear back from people. So let me take you through these, these three things that I think are really big obstacles. Not, not that we can't overcome them, but really big obstacles to your ministry at your local church. Number one, we ask too much information up front. This one in particular asks me name, email, address, state zip. If I'm first time guest, second time guest, regu regular attendee member, or if I want to update my info, it's asking my age, all kinds of things. And I look at it and I freak out. Now, I'm personally, if I take this into the service, I'm going to fill out everything and drop it in the drop it in the offering plate or the box. I, I have no problem with that because I am already a member in good standing and I'm proud for you to have my info. That's not the case with many, maybe even most of your visitors um, in some areas. And so um, I would just say that if we could do like the corporate world that does like that double opt-in where first you just put your name and either email or phone, um, that would be way better for us. And if you're doing this digitally, if you have a digital connect card, same thing. Um, you can ask more info later after you already grabbed those two things, just first name. And then you want us to contact you email or text and then fill that out. So that would solve the first problem. Um, also kind of a side note is that a lot of the language on our connect cards are made for insiders, people who are already comfortable, familiar with church. It's not the case with people I work with and probably not the case with a lot of people who are visiting your churches. You would be surprised. Uh, people can talk the talk, but they're not necessarily Christian. They just 
know how Christians talk. Um, number two, asking the wrong questions. Okay. This connect card in particular wants to know if I want to begin a relationship with Jesus, serve on a team. If I want to join the newsletter, if I want to get info on getting baptized or if I want to receive Bible studies, great questions, but these are second tier questions. Most people who are walking into church for the first time are walking in maybe because somebody invited them, but deeper than that, <clears throat> they're in some kind of crisis. And for me, my crisis is one of a social situation. Um, it's, it's still a crisis. It's not an emergency, but it's a crisis. And so I would say, like, let's give people categories maybe, and then let them tell us what they want. I, I like the ability to opt into the newsletter. That's my personal thing, but I think you could leave that off. So if we were to fix this and ask the right questions, maybe we would say, maybe we give people categories, I'll let them say in a drop down or on a paper, we would say, do you have um, questions about spiritual services? Maybe you could list those. Uh, physical help, list those, you know, Dorcas. Uh, social or service. I would give those four categories and let people pick them and then explain more about their, their inquiry. And then lastly, um, I could not for the life of me get anyone to respond, whether I filled out the guest book or whether I filled out one of these cards, um, waited and waited and waited and visited multiple times and filled out multiple cards and the soonest somebody got back to me was two and a half weeks. I hope your church is the exception to the rule, but we seem to breed a uh, a culture that's okay with lag time and getting back to our guests. Like they don't really need anything. They're fine. And that's probably not the case. As I said, if they're walking into church, they probably are looking for something. And how nice would it be to have one of your team members, a deacon or one of your greeters, grabbing these right after the offering. If your offering's at the very end, that's more of a challenge, but grabbing these and texting or email people, responding quickly and personally, or if you have a form, you can, you know, but if something's urgent, you can say, we'll get back to you on Monday. If it's like a question of social stuff, here's what's going on today. There's several of us going to lunch or there's potluck. I'd love to sit with you, et cetera, et cetera. But getting back to people like before the church service is over would be excellent. I mean, you would probably keep those people. So if you can't do it within 24 hours, like I, I'm not sure I would do it. I just... It just sets up false hope, and it has it has done that for me. So, those are the three things, and my initial my initial thoughts on the connect card. Um, what we want the connect card to do is to open up that funnel so that we can um, express how much we want someone to belong, how much they can fit in and be welcome, and we want to overwhelm them not with like loud or too much, but just with our quick response. Um, and then we can go into, you know, then you can go into what's next communications and, and, you know, carry on down the road, but just that immediacy would be, uh, I mean, unfathomable for me at this point. So Anyway, all right, that's it for now. Um, I'm sure my baby's going to wake up soon and my husband is chainsawing outside. I don't know if you heard it. So again, let me know what your church does. If you're the exception of the rule, let me know. I would love to secretly visit you and do a little video on like how this church rocks. Um, you can contact me at askachristianfriend at gmail.com and I'll see you soon. Bye.